It's NFL time, you sons of bitches out there. That's right, we're talking barbecue. We're talking pickup trucks. Get it done. NFL, baby. Here we go. What's up? I am DJ Anthony, your host and co-host, our PhD in biochem, uh, Dr. Magnus. Okay, we're talking about the NFL preview, but more importantly in the preview of the, of the NFL season coming up, we're talking about the health of the players and the health of the sport and how it changed for the better and, and is continuing to change, um, you know, month by month and, and over the years. So, and by the way, we're not giving any healthcare advice. Always check with the healthcare professionals. Okay, Magnus, you played football uh, at the highest levels, uh, you know, uh, in, in Europe and, 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 you know, pro, semi pro. I've played football in high school and I've coached it. Um, and I've been an athlete my whole life, as, as you are too. So, let's talk about NFL and, you know, I think, I don't know, you tell me, like I listen to a lot of sports radio and I hear a lot of people talk about, oh, the thing, these NFL plays are so soft nowadays. Yeah, you can't, you can't, you know, whatever they, you know, you start the game, you you, you punt it and now they're, they're moving the punting line closer. So you don't have a full head of steam. Uh, you know, the, the surfaces are a lot softer now. And that back in the day, it was just a green carpet. Ah, you guys, the sissies. And my retort to that is, well, no. These men are literally have died playing this sport. We saw it last year. A, a, a young man died and came back to life. Okay. So, I mean, like, we have to really take care of these humans. I mean, they're not pieces of plastic. So, uh, let's talk about some of the health uh, standards that have been changed, uh, like helmets have been improved. Um, and I think it's a good thing. I don't think it's a sissy thing or anything like that uh, across the board basketball and baseball and other sports you know it's really protecting the players so um yeah so let's talk about that magnus so uh, okay. you, you remember when you and i were playing when basically everything was lead with the helmet lead with the helmet now it's the polar opposite you're not like like lead, lead with not, the shoulder yeah. yeah do not like have your like head involved at all you're trying to avoid Bro, it at all costs i could not believe even when i was playing football and you know my coaches or a coach would say you know like yeah right leave with your head and even at a young age of 17 i thought to myself that doesn't seem right like why wouldn't i want to just leave, leave with my shoulder I'm like i'd rather hurt my shoulder than my head but i, I never said anything i said well the coach knows i guess he yeah. knows. you know he knows it turns out he doesn't know you know i you know also football as you know magnus american football is a sport of tradition where the coaches, hey, we just do it because we always did it. Uh, yeah. They don't really, you know, they're not exactly the great philosophical minds of our time, most of these coaches, not all of them, but most. So, of course, change is going to happen slowly, right? Hey, you got your bell rung. Ah, eh, suck it up. Get out there. Meanwhile, no, that's bad. Yeah. Yeah. I've got my bell rung. So if you like, you don't go back out there, guess what? You sit. You ain't going back out there. No, I mean, it, 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 I, I think, like, the mentality around football is starting to change. Yes, you will have the old generation saying that the new generations are sisters and things like that. But just, let's, let, let's just take a little bit uh, a look on the athletes nowadays. So uh, we can just mention that the 225-pound uh, bench press test that was basically, oh, that was basically what the, I think it was the average lineman used to weight back then, you know, when they started it. And today, like, if you're weighing 225 pounds, you're, you're, yeah, you might be playing, like, running back or safety. I mean, the, the, the players are so big, fast, strong, uh, and, and generate so much power nowadays. Yes, a lot of the players, old players, were very tough and went through a lot of things and didn't complain and basically paid, got paid peanuts. Now we have people that are, we're talking about $30 million a year contracts, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, that's kind of the norm for a lot of players. Right. So looking at it from uh, an owner situation and a, a team orientation, you are basically having extremely uh, expensive pieces out there. And I think they should be paid even more, if you ask me, because of the amount of money that goes into this sport and that oh, the well, owners actually... Oh, percentage-wise, yes. Yeah. Topic, but, yeah. So, so looking at it from that perspective, it's completely different. But you obviously want your investment to be able to play and be on the field and not being right. hurt. And that's why I think it's so important that we protect the players. And right. we should not just protect the, the 
quarterbacks right or the offensive players running back everyone all of them linemen linemen. yeah you know by the way you you know you mentioned uh and i think it this coincides because you know it it wasn't because back in the day i also want to say like i don't think it was because like back in the day owners didn't give a shit about the players i think back in the day you didn't have a thing called an mri machine you didn't have ct scans you couldn't tell the extent of damage that was happening. You would just say, hey, get your bell rung. Hey, get out there. Now we know from CT scans, from MRIs, from yeah. ultrasound that, oh, shit, this is bad. So yeah. kudos to the owners and coaches because, you know, no, these people are, you can say what you will, oh, they're stingy, they're greedy. But I don't think most of these people in the NFL want to hurt anyone. You know, Not at all. On a moral issue, right? Yeah. So they want to have, yeah, look, oh, wow, you know. Uh, let's get get him a CT scan. Let's let's get him an MRI. Okay, you're hurt. You know, now 50 years ago, you wouldn't have known that. You'd be like, yeah, hey, yeah, shut up. But now we know that. You know, so um, now real quick, I and I was taking a, you know just a quick uh, scan over the internet. So since 2002, the NFL has changed over 50 rules to improve player safety. They include uh, prohibiting players from lowering their heads to make contact, like Drew alluded to, with their helmet. Yep. Stopping defenders from needlessly tackling and landing on quarterbacks, you know, really roughing them up for no reason. Yep. And reducing big collisions on kickoff returns, you know, shortening the amount that you run. And yep. I just read now, for 2023 season, you're not allowed to trip anybody. Yep. So no, that might sound like, oh, what the hell, you freaking sissy. Yeah, but don't forget, tripping somebody, you could – you know, hurt their ankle, their leg, their knee, and they could be out for the season. This is a man's job. Like, he got family, you know, so it's like, come on, man. You know, and there's no need to trip. If you can't make the clean tackle... You know, yeah, it was it was only you were only allowed to trip the trip the ball carrier, but it's it's also a problem not just the the person getting tripped, but also the pre, the person that's trying to trip someone could hurt himself. Yeah, because you're extending out your leg, and like again, you might get caught uh, right. with your your foot and your knee, and you basically blow out your knee or right. your ankle or anything right. like that. Right. So so that goes both ways, both both protecting a defensive player. And the offensive players, so I, I think it's good. That, right, that, you know, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, and, 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 and smart plays don't. We're not yeah. tripping people, you know. You you right. you shouldn't be out of position that much. Right. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think you know we also see like some of the things that we we don't really notice that are out there, like better a better artificial turf. You know, I know by you and by me, like if you step on a modern day football artificial field, yeah. it's like almost like a pillow. You yeah. know, I mean, you know, so that that's a long cry from you know a green rug. Yeah, and the yeah, thing and, is, the thing is, the players though they want to be playing on real grass. And yeah, I think yeah, yeah. That I think that like it it has been proven statistically that the real grass that, is better. Yeah, it is a little bit better. Right. It's marginal, but I think it's also it comes down. You know, we're talking about the placebo effect too. I think just being on natural grass, it feels better. Right, and I right. think if you feel better, you play better, and and also like you you you're usually better off. Yeah. So I, I'm, I understand it. I mean, it, it, it definitely costs uh, more money, yeah. but again, I think the league should, should mm-hmm. kind of pivot into, to creating like have, have natural feeds yeah. um, as much as possible. I mean, we're looking at it in, in, in FIFA football, the only surface that's allowed to play on it is, is natural grass. Right. All right. Yeah. I mean, you know, my, right. And, and then my thing was like, you know, look, at least they were trying, right. might not be perfect. Yeah. Oh, no, no, but, for sure. Right. Yeah. And the other yeah. thing is the helmets are better. I personally oh. think, on it, this will never happen because there's a lot of money involved in sponsorship and, you know, they're not going to get these big companies to stop making plastic helmets. But I don't know, you tell me, Magnus, I think they should go back to just the soft helmets because yeah. then you won't use your head as a weapon. You won't spear, yeah. you know, but yeah. they're not going to do that. But no, sucks, no so. again, again, that then we might end up with, with the trouble of actually getting, you know, like other type of damages that that is not like cuts. Uh, more more issues with with broken noses and eyebrows and and ocular bones and things like that. So it it, it is kind of like a give and take. I, I there's been a lot about it. If you're looking at if you're looking at it like rugby leagues, like the professional rugby nowadays, we're not talking about a rugby tackling. I mean, it's they're pretty they're pretty tough and they don't have padding at all. So yes. Football definitely has more like impact in the tackles, right. but like rugby's getting closer, and they they don't wear helmets. They might have like the, the people that are are basically down in the trenches. They have like the the, the protective thing that you usually see nowadays on top of the helmets. I've seen, yeah, when I've they're seen practicing. That. So they have the bubble helmets. 
basically. Right. Uh, the thing that, that the players are complaining about it too is that, oh, it makes the head and helmet bigger. So right. it's harder to move and right. that might cause issues too. Right. And I think that we're still collecting a lot of, of data yeah. in, in the science field to see how good they are or not. But yeah. I think we're, we're obviously looking at protecting the players as 100%. much as possible. You know what I was going to say? I noticed, and I don't know what it is by California, but in Jersey, they're having youngsters now play flag football up until about ninth grade, which I think yep. is very smart. Because yep. when I was a child and you were a child, it was peewee football. They yep. just dressed up children with the with real football equipment, and they kids were getting their bells rung and get hurt. That's not helping a farm system. So yep. now it's flag football. You learn the fundamentals, and then when you get to ninth grade, you put a helmet on. I think that's amazing. I think that's very smart. Yep. So you see, yeah. you see similar things in hockey, for instance, that you're not allowed to tackle in in, in junior hockey uh, until later, uh, and I think that is good too because also the risk of injury and also like damaging kids uh, that might have have issues for the rest of their life oh. with sports injuries that young. Uh, I, I think I think it's good, and I you know you don't really want to see your kids getting uh, having concussions no. or, or breaking bones or, right. or tearing ligaments right. and have right. to go through surgery and rehab. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's hard as an adult and we, we kind of understand it, yeah. but for kids, oh, yeah. no. Yeah. yeah. So oh, yeah, yeah. No, I think it's really, really good. And I think this, you see, you start to see the change more and more throughout that, that, that uh, the school system want to, want to push for pads later on. And I think right. you actually become a better football player. I've oh. actually, I played touch and flag growing up, and you you actually become better of, of, of dodging tackles, yeah, and yeah. also like you become mm -hmm. better of breaking down and staying right, out of right. the way and not getting getting injured. Right. So yeah. you're still learning a lot of the fundamentals that are so important in football without actually like hitting each other. Yeah, and for sure. Hard. For sure. I was gonna say too that you know. Also, the other things that we take for granted is, and this wasn't always like this, but like, you know, watch when you, the viewers out there, when you watch football, especially in preseason and in the early uh, part of the year, you'll yeah. see things like the misting fans or the uh, cooling seats or the heating seats or the football yeah. players put their feet into the seats. And, you know, these are things that are safety and health related, you know, so, yeah. uh, we, you know, you have I'm, those things out I'm there. Yeah, I know Stanford started to look into a cool thing. It's basically like like sleeves that you put on your arms that that pump through a lot of, of cold water. So the, the surface area, you cool down, you cool down but basically your forearm and, and your the inside of your, your uh, elbows. So and, and that is also to cool players uh, on hot days. Right. Uh, I haven't I haven't read I know that they were, they were trying it in, in on uh, at, at their football team. I don't know what happened with it, and I need to look into it. But again, you've seen a lot of things happening too when it comes to it. like, especially when you say seeing the helmets that were starting to get position specific helmets. Like the linemen have more protection where they're hitting each other more. Now this is the first year that a, a new quarterback helmet is coming out because we're talking about protecting the backside of our head more because they get that whiplash. Uh, injury and things like that so so obviously technology and ingenuity is is trying to catch up and make it better so yeah. so depending on how you get hit most often what kind of injuries you get and what what kind of uh trauma you get exposed to we're trying to protect the place right. more from it this so, is big big data is coming to help yeah. yes yeah no and, and and that's also like you, you can see now also in in the nfl and a lot of the college uh, uh like especially the division one that they're also carrying all these these uh, electronics that measures speed, uh, how much they're moving, uh, impact, heart rate, uh, whatever, yeah. all things, temperature, things like that. So we're getting more data that we can actually figure out what is going on. And okay, this player is kind of getting into the red zone. We need to kind of like basically put him on a rep ca rep count and and slow it down a bit, you know. Right. And right. and also you see in NFL and, and in college too how they're not allowed to to have more than a certain couple of days with pads on or they have a break within to right. yes it less time for the players to get prepared for the season and right. you can you can argue that that is an issue but it's also like to keep the players fresh right yeah and i think um to your point you know uh i would also say you know if a parent is thinking about or on the fence about having their son uh 
play football or even maybe a daughter, uh, you know, look at you're hearing all the, the progress the football is making. I would say give give your kid a chance and, you know, can't hurt. I mean, look, other sports have just as many injuries, if not more. Basketball is a contact sport, yeah. wrestling, hockey. So, I mean, you know, soccer can be very dangerous. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, if, if you're worried about injury at all, then don't do any sports. But, I mean, you know, there's going to be some level of injury that's going to happen. And it's okay. It's okay. I mean, and there's a risk in life, right? But I, I highly recommend parents look at football. It, you learn a lot about life, a lot about, yeah. you know, uh, getting through adversity. I know in the darkest moments of my life, I, I leaned on my sports uh, background that helped me get through things and that's yep. what you learn from sports even if you're just playing ping pong whatever yeah but yeah football is great though yeah no it, a lot of things sports are great because you learn how to work together towards a goal and and and, and actually uh hanging out and socializing with people that you probably wouldn't probably talk right. to to start out with so i think that's that's a really really good thing it, it prepares you a lot for for later on in life you know with what with, with all sorts of things. And uh, yeah, no, one thing that, that I want to, to say to, to actually minimize the, the, the injury risk is have your kid play multiple sports yeah. throughout cross, the year. Cross train, cross train. Yeah. Yeah. And also do not specialize at an early age. Don't have your kids play uh, school sports club team uh, and constantly have uh, like being in the season and playing games and stuff like that year round. Oops, sorry, because that is what injured the ki the kids a lot. Overuse injuries that they're they're not growing correctly. That like certain muscles are underdeveloped and other muscles are overdeveloped. That you have joint issues, things like that, mobility issues. So I, I recommend that that have your kids play as many sports as possible. As long as possible, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah that's and especially did. especially through high school. You know, I mean, it's yeah. seasonal. You can you can do track and fields. You can play basketball, baseball, football. You know, like have them play sports and and not make a choice. So you all know you have to specialize. And to be honest, like look into to to start like training. Like we're, we're talking a strength training at an early age. We don't have to lift weights or anything like that. Rubber but bands, can, uh, calisthenics. Yep. And, and we can push a sled. We can run hills. We can do all these things. We can work on mobility. We can work on stability because that is usually what the kids lack mostly is that they don't have the stability or the mobility to do things correctly. Right. So, yeah. so there's a lot of things that, that they can train and get better at that is not just their specific sport. 100%. Magnus, that's all I got. You do you want to add anything before we wrap it up, my man? No, like again, I understand that you you have a fantasy football team, things like that, and you you're getting upset that your 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 player get injured and things like that. Remember, they're real human beings. Like if it were your kids. Like, remember, like you, we have to protect. We have to see them as persons. Oh, they make millions. Yeah, they make millions. They're lucky that they are making millions. But we also need to understand that they're still human beings and they need to protect their bodies and take care of them, too, if they get injured. Yeah, anybody and, talking shit like that probably has yeah. never played past Pee Wee baseball when they were five. You know, those shit talkers. But anyway. Yeah. But uh, all right, yeah. Magnus. Thank you, as always, my man. Awesome. Uh, Thank Southern you. Southern Cal out. Me. New Jersey out. Thank you, everybody. Tune back in. A lot of great shows coming up, everybody. Okay, Magnus. Thank you, my man. Let like and subscribe. Yeah, come on, people. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one.